Hi, my name is Tim Wemple. I'm a landscape photographer from Joplin, Missouri, and I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. I look forward to teaching you how to use Photoshop and Lightroom to achieve your creative goals. So let's get started. All right, I've got this picture pulled up here that we worked on with our gradient fill layer to add the uh, sun rays in here. And today I want to talk to you about channels. channels. Okay, it's, it's really not that bad. But up here we have layers and we have our channels. And channels, think of them as a storage. It's, it's kind of like a filing cabinet where we store things. And what we store in channels are selections, or you might think of them as a place to store masks as well. But let's take our gradient fill layer here and let's change this back to normal. And let's increase our pa opacity back up to 100%. So this is what we've got here. Let's go ahead and turn off our little s brightness from our sun there. Now if we go back to channels, watch what we can do. We've got this gradient fill layer mask here, which goes again to prove this is kind of a place where our masks and selections are stored. If we go back here, you'll see we've got a mask here. Well, it's also stored back here. But let's take um, one of these channels here and let's drag it down to the little page icon down there, which actually adds another channel or what's called an alpha channel to our channels palette here and let's call this sun rays. Okay, let's click on the RGB up here again and that takes us back to our regular picture here. And let's turn off our sun rays so we're back to our original picture here. Now the thing about storing things in channels, see it's still there, uh, this copy that we made, is that you can load that as a selection by holding down the control, and find the control key here. When you push down the control key or the uh, command key I believe on a Mac, you see this little dotted dashed square there which means you're about to make a selection and when you click on that you actually are selecting all the white in that uh, channel here which loads up a selection over here and we can tell that because we can see the marching ants here and you may or may not see these marching ants it depends the marching ants only show you the brightness levels that are greater than 50%. So any brightness or white that's greater than 50%, the marching ants show up on. The ones that are below are still selected, but you don't see the ants there. So I just loaded up our sun ray uh, that we created over here with the gradient fill and we stored in our channels over here. I just loaded that up as a selection by holding down the control or command key and then clicking on it. And when you go back to your layers, make sure that you've clicked on the RGB so you've got all these selected and all their eyeballs are turned on. Okay, now this is where I think we can make our sun rays look even more realistic than what we did with the gradient fill, but we have to go through that step to get to this point. We've actually, we basically have made a selection with the gradient fill, and now that selection is loaded up. We're going to add a new layer down here, and in that new layer, we're going to come over here to our brush, uh, white, and we want to paint with white and we'll leave it at 50% and I'm going to increase the brush size here again 
pretty good size up to about 1700 again and I just click on the top here to get rid of that panel and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting on this and as I'm painting you can start to see the little sun rays showing up here even though the marching ants are not around here you're really there is a selection there it's just that it's less than 50 percent gray so we're just going to paint here and I'm thinking the sun rays are probably going to maybe go behind this tree so I'm just coming up to the edge of it and then I'll come on the back side here and click a few times and just add some sun rays kind of leaving the sun rays off that tree there just a little bit and I'll just click around here until and I'm using a very soft brush my hardness is at zero percent so I'm getting these nice smooth edges here maybe click down here a few times okay now let's turn our selection off there let's see selection deselect so now what you can see is I have a, a very controlled area that I've added my sun rays into as opposed to when we were here let's turn this back to screen it's pretty much everywhere but with this technique of loading that making a channel out of that and then loading that as a selection we can go in and really fine-tune where we put that and we can also turn this layer into screen but it won't make any difference because basically we're just painting with white so we're going to have the same thing so normal works fine on this this layer we don't have to change it to screen because we don't have any black in it like we did in the gradient fill because we're just painting with white now the other thing is uh, at any time we can go back and load that selection up so let's say we want to change something here we can go back in to our channel come down here to our sun rays and hold down the control or command key click on it and we're back to our selection again so let's say I think I got a little bit too much on that tree I want to take that back a little bit I can come over here to the eraser tool and let's get just a soft brush again uh, let's see here yeah let's just go with this here and we'll reduce the size something like that okay now I can come back in here and just erase that off that tree a little bit more so you can kind of work this um, however you like so maybe uh, I think I erased a little bit too much down here I'll go back to my paintbrush and just add a little bit more in there again so it's kind of a way of working that um, with a mask but I don't have a mask I have a selection and I'm working within that selection anything that's selected I can paint in or do anything but anything that's not selected nothing will happen to that okay now here's the really neat thing about doing it this way let's take and turn the uh, selection off is I can also come back in here and put a mask on this so I'll come down to the little square with the uh, circle in the middle of it click on it that adds a mask now anything that we want to hide um, we can paint in uh, with black here so let's or let's let's do this let's go up here and if you see there's a kind of a frame around the mask right now that means I have it selected so you want to make sure that when you're working in the mask you have it selected but then you can also add filters to your mask so let's go to render clouds and you can see I just added a mask there or yeah I added the mask to mask out what we just painted in here doesn't look very realistic but let's see if we can do some things to it let's go under filters again and let's try 
Um, let's try motion blur. Okay, I've got it set up really high there. Let's see, what if we turned it to match the uh, sun rays here? Okay, that's looking a little bit more kind of realistic. It's kind of breaking up our sun rays a little bit. Get it to somewhere here that's pretty subtle. Okay, <clears throat> now that may be masking out a little bit more than we like. In the new, uh, I, I know it's in the CS6 and I'm using CS or CC, but you can actually double click on the mask which will bring up your mask properties here and we can take the density and lower that down to where it's not quite taking out as much as it was before. We just basically made our mask a little bit wider. If you don't have um, this capability in your version, there's another way of doing it. And you can also do adjustment layers to mask. So we can come over here to our adjustment, go to levels, and let's see here. We don't want to do this. We want to take the gradient down here and we want our blacks to become more white so we're going to take the output level and just kind of slide it over and you get that same effect that you did with the density okay we'll just leave it about right there okay and actually I like this much better because now if I wanted to go in here and mask a little bit more let's say I wanted to add a gradient mask to it say I wanted to kind of cut this back down here. I've got my uh, gradient. It's set to trans, uh, foreground to transparent. And I've got black selected. I can come in here with the radial and just click here and kind of cut that out a little bit. You can see over here how it's it's masking out our sun rays. If I were to have, let me go in here and let's undo that. If I were to go in here and do what we did before where we changed the density, let's say we took it down to 43, and I did that same thing to the mask again here with our black gradient, I don't get that full effect. I only get a partial effect because of the properties of the mask. So. If you want to be able to go in and add more things to your mask uh, at full strength, then the best thing to do is go in and use levels and use that output, take the black down. That way you can go in and have full strength. But remember, channels are not that scary. All they are is a place that masks are, are stored or you can actually uh, store things in here that um, are selections and use them as selections just by simply holding down the control or command key and clicking on it. And let me uh, show you one more. Let's, let's just control click in this layer right here and I'll take it one step further to prove this to you. Okay, let me get my control key down and I'm selecting what we've got painted in here. Now normally this wouldn't work uh, if it was an image, but since we've only painted in a little bit of it and there's transparency around it, it's only going to pick up what's got uh, paint in it and it won't pick up the transparency. But basically we've just made another selection. Now watch what happens if we go up here and we go select and we say save selection and let's just name this from layer and look at this right down here it says new channel so when I click on that if we go over to our channels look what look what we have right here we have that selection and it's in a new channel a new alpha channel here so Channels are not that scary. They're just a place where masks and selections can be stored and then you can go back at any time 
load those up and use them in your image. So I hope that helped you uh, understand the channels panel a little bit better and what it can be used for and hopefully let me turn off our uh, selection here so you can get see what we've done hopefully that will make uh, channels not as scary as they were before and you can see how you can actually use channels to kind of do like a double mask use them to paint in and then you can also add a mask on top of that Alrighty, I hope that helped you out, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, I hope that helped you out. Make sure and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming up on doing all kinds of things with the landscape photography. Thanks for coming by. Again, make sure and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.